The Arabic language, or Al-Lughat al arabiya is not simply one language. It encompasses approximately 30 varieties of what are considered dialects, but these dialects could also be classified as other languages. Arabic is spoken by about 380 million people around the world, making it the fifth most spoken language in the world. To English speakers, Arabic seems to be entirely different, but in this video, we question how true that sentiment really is. If you've been subscribed to the Historical Method Man channel for a while, you would know that I'm a non-native speaker of Modern Standard Arabic and Moroccan Darija. Today, I'm going to give a brief overview of how Modern Standard Arabic, or al de al Arabiya Fusha, operates. This video was inspired by Nanjek's video on Chinese languages titled, Is It So Different? Let's get into it. You might have heard that Arabic is one of the hardest, most complex languages in the world. But let's keep in mind, all languages are endlessly complex. There are many English words that you might not have known are loan words from Arabic. For instance, English has borrowed words from Arabic related to mathematics, algebra, algebra, chemistry, kimia, traded goods, cotton, al cotton, and foods, coffee, kahwa, sugar, sukkar. These loan words seem to be relatively few, but it's always a treat to come across new cognates. The largest similarity between Arabic and English are their use of alphabetical writing systems. The Arabic alphabet has 28 letters as compared to the English alphabet's 26. You likely already know that the Arabic alphabet moves from right to left, opposite of English's left to right. Imagine a heartbeat monitor that moves right to left. Sometimes it pulses up, sometimes it pulses down, but it always returns back to the center line. While reading Arabic, each letter is like these heartbeats, but they move back to the center line and move leftwards towards the next letter. Each Arabic letter has four positions, roughly related to where the letter is placed within a word. These four positions are initial, medial, final, and isolated. The isolated position is what the letter looks like when it sits by itself, when it is not connected to any other part of a word. This position sometimes appears quite different from when it is connected. There are six letters that don't connect to the left, and these letters are alif, dal, dal, ra, Zai and Wow. Let's take the word for house, Beit. It is spelled with the letters Ba, Ya, and Ta. Here are these letters in their isolated forms. When we put them together, we see that their lining looks quite similar, and they are distinguished by the number of dots and where these dots are placed. Many Arabic letters share sounds with English letters, but there are some unique letters that are not contained in English. There are the letters Ein and Rein, which are produced from the back of the throat. There's also Ha, Ka and Ka. Then there are the emphatic consonants, which I personally refer to as the deep letters. Notice the differences between the letters Dal and Dal, Ta and Ta, Tha and Tha, Seen and Saad. So that's the alphabet, but what about Arabic grammar? Unlike English, the secret to Arabic grammar is in the letters more so than in the words. Arabic words are typically derived from a three letter root which represents the core meaning of the word. Let's try taking these three root letters, da, ra, and sin, and transform them into new words. Now we have the word darasa, meaning he studied. If we put the letter meme in front and the feminine marker tamarbuta after, we get a place noun, madrasa, which means school, related to study. Speaking of that feminine marker, some words in Arabic are masculine, while others are feminine. Feminine words are distinguished by a letter called ta marbuta, which sits at the end of the word. This is a unique letter because of its function as a gender marker. Arabic grammar agrees not only on gender, but also on number, which brings us to another unique feature of the Arabic language, the dual form. For instance, if you want to say two books, then you only use one word, kitaban, which comes from the word for book, kitab, and the dual ending, an. If you want to say two female students, we take the word for student, talib, add tan marbuta to make it feminine, which gives us taliba, and then we add our dual ending of ain, which finally is pronounced as talibatain, two female students. Arabic is a language that is very grammatical and sometimes mathematical. It requires its learners to play with the triliteral root system, adding prefixes, suffixes, or circumfixes in order to create specific meanings out of general roots. In short, the grammar is in the letters. I hope that this short video gave you a better understanding of how the Arabic language works. And if you appreciated this video, please give it a thumbs up as it really helps the channel. Al shukran wa ma salama.